Dan from SimpleLibraryReview.com. Today we're going to be checking out Trailer Brahms by Fallout Music Group. I've been loving what Fallout Music Group is doing. Very specialized instruments for trailer tools and all kind of cinematic effects. This new take on Signature Brahms promises to give us complete control over customizing Brahms for an amazing sound regardless of our track's tempo. Library requires 2.5 gigabytes, and it's a Brahms generator. The sources for the samples are original samples of live brass recordings to modular synths, all sampled at 24-bit 48K. There's thousands of unique combinations, thanks to the three-layer engine. It's full NKS compatible, and a contact player instrument compatible with contact 6.6.1 full or the free version downloads in native access and normally sells for $79. Now at the time of putting the video together here, I think you got like one week left if you'd like to pick it up on the intro prize for just $59. I'll include a link to take you over to Fallout Music Group so you can check it out or grab it during that intro price. All right, this is a first look of Trailer Brahms 2. First time we're cracking into it. I've used several of the developer's instruments and have liked them a lot. This three-layer engine is very similar to some of their other engines, or I should say some of their other instruments. Let's just start out by listening to a whole bunch of these custom presets for Brahms. Let's go ahead and mute my mic. I'll be quiet for a while and we'll listen to some stuff. Here we go. Okay, we're only three in, and I already have to say the diversity of the first three alone. Wow. Now, another thing I want to note here is that these are uh, tempo synced for your DAW. So I was at 120. Now I'm at 239. Let's see what happens. Yeah, you can see it's it's going with the tempo there. As I adjust my tempo, it's changing, so it's locked right in. Very nice. Yeah, really diverse range. Uh, surprisingly diverse. Not just big old Hans Zimmer Brahms. Oh yeah, there's a nice sub in that one as well. <laughs> There's some neat stuff going on stereo-wise in that one. All right, let's check out... Uh, that was Kyle uh, Nicely's presets. Let's check out uh, Purcell's. Very ethnic underlayer in that one. That's very cool. I like.
like how these have uh, two octaves now as well, whereas some of the other ones earlier only had one octave. Well, we're back to one octave. Never mind. Again, the diversity is is really cool so far. Yeah, these pulsing sub Brahms. <clears throat> I'm almost feeling like this is going beyond what Brahms are or what we've considered trailer Brahms in some way. Almost like uh the sound design is expanding Brahms into new territory. That one is meaty, I'll tell you what. Let's do a couple more of our... Randons. We just listened to those, didn't we? Come on. Here we go. Gut punch. Yeah, very interesting. Let's move on to the final category. Um, Simon Hoglund. Very cool. Ooh, I love the tune, out of tuneness, the tune bends and that. Yeah. Nice war horns here. And that does it for our presets. Looking over the interface quickly, we've got settings so that we control uh, a couple things for our master settings for bend range. We can extend to low range there, extend to high range. I might wish this was on all the time, personally. They've got layers one, two, and three with the sounds availability. So if you just want to deal with just brass on one, you keep that, strings on another, organics, transitions on the other. That's very cool. Let's um, close those settings up and you can see we've got randomization for all those layers. randomization within the layer.
Each layer's got uh, attack release, tuning, um, the ability to change the time stretching for each of those layers. Then we've got LFO, reverb, plate. Let's see, we've got a few different uh, reverb effects. Color size, return, delays. Of course, in the center, these are our layer controls. Layer one, layer two, layer three, panning up top, solo and mute. Um, we can also show this power button. Which gives a real kind of saturation to whatever you're running through it. On the master sounds, there's the ability to, to have low pass. and high pass filters. Those can all be MIDI CC'd. You've got color here. And that is pretty much what the interface has there. Why don't we go ahead and build a couple custom Brahms just to get a little bit of a feel of what we can do. Well, I'm just gonna randomize this here. Back to the mixer. I'm going to mute these. Listen to our first layer brass destroyed. Turn the verb and delay off just so we can hear our samples. Some subs. That's a lot of aggressive low end in that one. Ooh, that one's got a nice attack to it too. Okay, let's go ahead and add, uh, mix it in with something here. I'm gonna pan this one over. I'm gonna do something in the, let's see what else we got. Oh, we got so many. Let's do something high. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's move on to our third layer. I think for this, we'll probably want to go and get it something sub. Not liking that one. Okay, let's check out some verb. Delay set up to tempo sync. You can see we got eighth notes, quarter notes, triplets.
got a little queue already generated, just kind of playing with getting a, a custom Braum together. This uh, high and low pass, I think that it's going to be really helpful. I am a hitting my red up here for my output, so I might back this guy off to negative six. A lot of contact instruments output at negative six, and I don't know if they've got a um, compressor in the output chain of this or not. So one other thing we could probably do is play a little bit with our LFOs. There we go. You hear that uh, flick rig now going on? Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, that's kind of a snapshot that uh, maybe I'll save this guy here. Save it up. So let's go ahead and jump over to one of these early ones. Here we go. This is kind of cool because I didn't check out any of these organic samples. So let's take a look at some of these. Because these are way down here. I didn't even get to these. Aggressive cello. Now it's got a lot of stereo kind of flange movement. Okay, that's a pretty standard kind of guitar sound. A little drop tuning. Let's go ahead and play with something organic. Maybe we could get kind of a sub out of this. Yeah, it's very airy still. I want to hit those organics, though. Okay. Let's see what this guy is. It's right now aggressive woodwinds. Yeah, I think the ability to have so much programming and movement in these three-layer engine, yeah, it's going to be great. You're going to be able to get all kinds of custom sounds. I think the curation is what's kind of drawing me to Trailer Brahms 2 in that the sound design you can get out of the engine seems as though it's much more diverse than just some trailer sounds, some Brahm sounds, I should say. It's really expanded upon what my preconceived thoughts about this library were, so much to the point that I'm thinking of it more of a, of a Brahm and sound design tool. LFL cool, getting pulses. This could be a pulse machine, really. The effects, just what you need to add to it. This uh, power big knob here, pretty cool. 
adds a lot of saturation and great sound. And I'm loving that they've got low and high pass because that kind of opened my mind of a new way to play with these Brahms instead of changing Brahms every you know bar be able to manipulate those Brahms just with a simple higher low pass and we've got something that's evolving combining that with the power knob I'm liking it I think they've done a great job with this I'm liking what Fallout Music Group has been doing and Trailer Brahms 2 kind of blew me away here from what I expected but those are just my thoughts. Please let me know what you think about the instrument. Please comment below. If you're not already, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Head back around for the weekly deal compressor show on Fridays.